Welcome to a very special episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. It's our year-end edition where we talk about and release the top episodes of the year, the most downloaded episodes of the year. And I will share insights from the year uh, and some of my action items from each of these top podcasts for the year. My name is Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm so excited to be with you Um this is a, another live episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, where, where we are helping leaders grow personally and professionally to lead more effectively and make a bigger difference for their teams, organizations, and the world. And if you are listening to this on the podcast, just a few days in this case after I've been live, you can join us live in the future on your favorite social platform. And the way to learn more about that is to, to check us out on Facebook or LinkedIn uh, and join our groups there either at remarkablepodcast.com slash Facebook or remarkablepodcast.com slash LinkedIn. I hope you'll do that. And so for all of you that are with us live, we're so glad you're here. And if you're listening later, I hope that you enjoy this as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Remarkable Development Sessions. A Remarkable Development Session is a webinar for a new world. We know that we learn in interaction with others, but in a fractured and increasingly virtual world, the workshop experience has been shifted to a focus on delivering the content and leaving the application to you as an individual. Today, we're focused very much on application, but even if you love learning from webinars, uh, you've likely thought there's got to be a better way in a virtual world and uh, to make webinars even better than they are. That's what we've done with Remarkable Development Sessions. You can learn more by going to kevinikenbray.com slash remarkable development to learn more and register for an upcoming session on a valuable skill. We have one of those coming in January. So having said that, uh, let me dive into this episode as we talk about a review of 2021 on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. I, I did some work this morning and looking this up. We started this podcast in 2016. And um, uh, between episodes like this and the short uh, replays of our Remarkable TV videos. There's 640, I believe, episodes total. 360, some of those are with a guest. And uh, since we started in 2016, we've done had a variety of guests, uh, uh, clearly. We've had a few duplicates. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. And ever since the end of 2018, I've done some sort of a year-end wrap-up episode. So uh, I've gotten a little bit better at this over time, I, I would like to say. Uh, I would tell you that during this year, we've had guests join me from at least five countries uh, who have joined me uh, in almost every case live. Nearly all of the uh, of the episodes this year with a guest have been done live. I think there's been a handful that were recorded. A and during the course of this year, I would say we've had three guests who are internationally famous for the long haul, um, having written many bestsellers, including Bill George and Tom Peters, uh, Tom back for the second time, uh, and Ram Sharan. Uh, all of these gentlemen are multiple time bestselling authors. It was an absolute honor to have them join us this year. And while we've had a number of other tremendously uh, successful guests, of course. There are a couple that are also uh, multiple-time best-selling authors, not quite as old, if you will, as those first three, not uh, quite as distinguished of a career for as long a time. Uh, but Keith Ferrazzi joined us again this year, and uh, Liz Wiseman joined us. I was so excited to have Liz join us. So those five people of the 50 or so guests this year, I think you could, you could underline and say these are these are multiple time best-selling authors and I've been happy to have all of them join us. During the course of the year, you know, we work hard to try to bring to you the best guests with the best new ideas. And so it would make sense. And I guess because many of our guests are have written new books and that's part of why they're here. It would make sense that many of the topics that we talked about are among the most talked about and written about topics of the year in the business press uh, and cer certainly in sort of the business media. So if I look at the whole year, uh, it won't surprise you to find probably that we've had a number of guests and a number of conversations about organizational culture 
We've had a number of conversations about employee engagement. We've talked a lot about mental health and mental fitness. Uh, we've had a tremendous number of conversations about relationships, both as the title of an episode or the core idea of an episode, but also uh, a number of times throughout other episodes, the idea of the importance of relationships for us as leaders uh, and as individuals have come up. And there's been a tremendous amount of conversation about change. And some of those topics will show up in our top six episodes as I introduce those. Um, so I'm going to introduce those winners in a few minutes. But before I do that, some overall observations about those top episodes and what we learned from them. And again, if you're with us live and you've got a question, um, please feel free to share it. If you have an observation uh, or if you happen to like any of these episodes and you want to comment on those, please do that. Uh, but again, if you've got a question for me as we go, let me know. So let me share some of my insights, uh, the insights about these six. Then I'll introduce these six uh, most uh, downloaded episodes of the year. And then I will share sort of my lessons from each of them specifically. Okay, so that's sort of where we're going to head over the next few minutes. So uh, two of the two of the episodes are were very much about change itself. And while I think there's an element of change in all six of these most downloaded episodes, two of them were nominally about the change topic, which I said is, is one of the bigger topics of the year. Two of the episodes were really about our growth as individual leaders and what it takes for us and some specific skills that we could be working on and learning uh, to get better. Two of the episodes are about that specifically. One of the episodes is about competition in a digital world. So sort of a, a high level look at business and what's going on in the competitive marketplace. And then another one of the books that while it certainly contains lessons for us as an individual leader is really a more of a book about career progress for us as well. So one of my goals, and I said this at the start of this episode, as I do at all episodes, and that is that our it's our goal here at the Remarkable Leadership Podcast to help you grow both as an individual leader and to help your organizations grow as well. And I think it's true about all six of these that I'm going to announce here in a second, that there were lessons for us organizationally, and there were certainly lessons for us as individual leaders in all six of these episodes. So, uh, as and one more thing uh, about these sort of an inside baseball thing, uh, five of the six that I'm going to announce to you in a second were the first five episodes of the year. So in some ways you would think, oh, they've been out there the longest. So they've had the, the most chance to be downloaded. So there's probably some truth to that, but I think you'll find incredible quality in those five. But the number one episode of the year, most downloaded, is also one of the most recent so when we get to that, I think it's worth noting that not it didn't have the chance to be uh, downloaded by new listeners throughout the course of the year, but is one of the newest of them all. So so let's talk about and introduce the the six of these in order. We'll sort of do it in uh, in uh, uh, in Casey Kasem backwards forward kind of uh, number. So number six, the sixth most downloaded episode of the year. Uh, was is was a conversation I had with April Wren about her book Flux: How to Survive in Times of Change. And so uh, the sub subtitle of this book is Eight Superpowers for Thriving in Constant Change. Um, by the way, I have copies of five of the six books with me. One of the books I read digitally, and in fact, it is number uh, five. Number five on the list is from the. Uh, ultra successful, multiple time bestselling author, Ram Sharan. And we talked about his book, Rethinking Competitive Advantage, uh, which is his latest book and was the topic of our conversation in the fifth most downloaded episode of the year. The number four most downloaded episode is the, the one that I would say is, is maybe more of a career book, a bit different for us here, but it's with Beverly Jones, Find Your Happy at Work, subtitled 50 ways to get unstuck, move past boredom, and discover fulfillment. 
Um, this, this conversation, I think, is especially useful because it helps us as individual leaders, but it really is of great value for us to think about for our team members as well. Uh, lots of great things to help them because it wasn't written directly or only or specifically for leaders. And so Beverly and I's conversation isn't just about us as leaders. Find your happy at work. The third most downloaded episode of the year is called the 100X Leader, How to Become Someone Worth Following, uh, a conversation that I had with Jeremy Kubisek, uh, who co-wrote this book with Steve Cochran. And uh, it was a pleasure to have Jeremy on, and we had a great conversation last January, or it was live in January, excuse me, it was released in January, uh, about what it means to be a 100X Leader. We'll talk about my lessons from that here in a second. The second most uh, downloaded episode of the year um, it is with Jeff was with Jeff Brown, and we talked about his book Read to Lead. And uh, to to which I would say that of all of the people that I met virtually uh, in the past year, he's one of the one of the folks I've learned the most from, not just from the episode, but from my ongoing following of him on social media. Uh, and the recommendations that he's given that I have taken from that. So conversation with Jeff Brown, read to lead, tremendous book, tremendous conversation. And then the number one. So all of those were early in the year episodes. At first, they were the first, not in that order, but they were the first five episodes of the year. But the number one most downloaded episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast this year just came out in November. And it's with Chuck Mahler and the book, the book and the and the episode are titled Becoming an Agile Leader. Here's the book, The Rise of the Agile Leader. Can you make the shift uh, in which we talk about the idea of agile principles and how we can apply that to us as leaders? Clearly, this is a book that talks a lot about change. So there are, without a drum roll, the six most downloaded episodes of the year. And uh, the other thing, though, that I promised in this episode is sort of my lessons. If you've listened to or watched any episodes of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, you know that I always ask this question at the end, near the end of every episode. I ask the question of now what? And I challenge you to take some action from what you've learned. And so certainly I could say that for you today and say, go back and listen to one or more of these episodes if you haven't. I hope that you'll do that. Uh, but what I promised in my preview is that I would share my answer to those questions uh, from each of these six episodes. So that's what I want to do now. And I'm going to look at my notes to do that. Uh, so what I want to do is share one of the things that I've applied and I've been challenged by from these particular episodes. And so let me do that now. So uh, from my conversation with April about Flux, uh, she and I talked a lot about the idea of moving from trying to predict what change will come to simply being prepared for the fact that it's going to come. And, and that's something that I've worked really hard uh, with my team on this year is to worry less on exactly what's going to happen, but for us to be better prepared for whatever is going to come. So I've worked hard as an individual leader to help prepare myself and our team for those kinds of things. Ken said he missed numbers six and seven. Well, there's number six right there. We were just talking about uh, my lesson from April. Uh, in number five, which is about rethinking competitive advantage with Ram Sharan. The thing that I took from Ram's conversation that I challenged myself throughout the course of this year to work on is the idea that learning is, in fact, a competitive advantage. If you, if you know me, have worked with me, have listened to me, uh, have learned from me at all, you know that I'm a big believer in learning as one of the key competencies for us as uh, leaders. And, uh, you know, we have built our business and I have built my career around the idea of learning. And yet I re-established this for myself this year, uh, the idea that to think of learning as a competitive advantage for our company, but also for uh, us as individual leaders. And so 
I find myself in an interesting spot by reading a book each week to prepare for it for an episode here. And yet also as, as wonderful as these books are that I uh, share, get the chance to share a conversation with for you in the on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, there are other things that I want to be reading as well, right? So I'm challenged to not only keep up with what I'm reading for all of your benefit, and of course, for my benefit too, but also the other things that I want to be reading for my own development and for the development of our organization. And so to be thinking about it as a competitive advantage is incredibly valuable um, for me. And it's been one of the things that I've worked hard to do this year. And the number four uh, a, a most popular download episode download uh, was my conversation with Beverly Jones. And uh, th this is a book with 50 ideas in it. So 50 short chapters, 50 things. And the thing that I answered, my answer to the now what question in my conversation with Beverly was about enjoying your free time. And, and the less, and what I've tried to do this year is, you know, I, I, I work pretty hard to have, to try to have good work-life balance and, uh, I have lots of things that I enjoy in my life besides my work as much as I enjoy my work. But what I was challenged by Beverly to do was to be more intentional about my free time and to use it to the fullest. I don't want to make it sound like I'm trying to be type A about my free time, but rather to simply be more intentional and aware of how I'm gaining joy from and uh, and and value from my free time. So, um, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that every moment of my free time is planned. Uh, it is certainly free, but I've worked really hard um, to get better at that this year. And I want to thank Beverly for that. My conversation with Jeremy, um, what it means to be a 100 X leader. We talked about, uh, we talked about the idea of a Sherpa. And the Sherpa is moving because the idea of this book, and you can see it on the cover if I get it back far enough, that the idea of moving, to the, excuse me, moving to the mountaintop uh, is a big sort of metaphor in the book. And so he and I talked about the idea of being a Sherpa, the leader as a Sherpa. And that the Sherpa is not trying to get to the top. He's trying to help as many people get to the top, he or she, get as many people to the top as they can. And so that challenged me to be even more intentional with my team about developing them and helping them uh, achieve the things that they want to achieve and, and to try to be a better coach for my team because clearly uh, that's a part of our job as a leader. And so uh, Jeremy challenged me and, and I've, I've tried hard this year to work on that. Uh, the second most downloaded episode of the year uh, was my conversation with Jeff Brown, who co-wrote the book, Read to Lead. And so we've already talked a little bit about, about reading uh, and how much reading I try to do uh, and, and need to do. Uh, but one of the things that I learned uh, from Jeff is, is a little bit about reading differently. And uh, what I realized is that there was a time in, in my career when I read in a more... I think a more diligent way, uh, more time in taking notes and more time with a highlighter and all that sort of thing. And, and it, and in part because of this podcast and needing to read, to be successful, to have a successful conversation with our guests and to make it a better episode for you. Uh, my reading became often a little bit too perfunctory and for that purpose. And so I've rededicated myself to reading for the purpose of my own learning and not just to prepare successfully for a great conversation. So, and again, not everything I read is for the podcast and yet a lot of it is, I mean, 50 some books each, each year for this purpose, uh, plus a bunch more for our virtual leader kind of event. So um, that, that put me into a habit that wasn't necessarily the one I wanted. And so Jeff challenged me and, and urged me in our conversation uh, to be more diligent as a learner and to read differently and really to read more like I once did and less like I did more recently. And, and I think I've gotten better at that. And the number one episode of the year uh, was our conversation with Chuck Mahler about becoming an agile leader uh, based on his book, The Rise of the Agile Leader. And, and I think for me, the... 
one of the things that came up in he and I's conversation that I, it isn't probably necessarily a core idea of the book. I, I don't even think I didn't look this morning to see if there's a chapter on this topic. Um, but we had a conversation that talked a lot about the need for us to be more appreciative of our teams. And I, I would hope that my team would say I'm pretty good at this. I, I would say I'm probably better than average at this, but I know I could be far better. And so in my conversation with uh, Chuck, one of the things that I took from it is that I need to work harder and be more intentional at being appreciative of my team for what they do uh, for our clients and what they do for me and what they do for each other. And, and so I've been working hard over the last several weeks since my conversation with Chuck to try to get better at that, to be to show my appreciation for the team uh, and for others, including our clients and others as well, for sure. So th those are my lessons. I, I told you that uh, I was going to try to show you how I practiced what I preach when at the end of every episode, I ask you this question, now what? What are you going to take from it? So I will close this episode the way I close all their episodes when I have a guest. And that is now what? What will you do with this? Perhaps uh, you will take note of one of the things that I've worked on and say, I need to work on that myself. Uh, perhaps there's one of these episodes that you didn't listen to or watch that you might want to go back and do. And uh, perhaps there's one that you missed and you say, hey, that's what I need to go learn from. And so I hope that you do that. I really do. Uh, I hope that you found this episode, while different, you found it useful. And I hope that maybe most of all, that you will use something from what you got either today or in some other episode this year of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast or being with me live, and that you will use it um, to become a more effective leader because the world needs us to be better leaders. Your team deserves you to be a, an even better leader. And, and that's why we're here is to help you on that journey. And I hope that today and this podcast help continues to help you do that both now and far into the future. And as if you don't know, I'll be back next week with another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. We'll see you then.